Okay. So thank you both so much. So very excited to speak with you. Lake Cotto. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I was not ready. <laughs> I was not ready. You guys did such a fantastic job with this movie. I, I know you guys are very busy. I'll try to be as brief as possible with my questions. Yeah. The bodies in the water set a chilling tone for this movie right from the beginning. How did you decide to start the story with such a stark moment? What, what were you hoping the audience would feel immediately? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a promise of where we are going to get to energy-wise. Because story-wise, there's a lot of groundwork to lay and sort of exposition of you know laying the the railroad track that ultimately has you know your payoffs down the road and without that opening um you there there might have been a question about sort of tone and um you know energy level for the film and so we felt like it was important to sort of like open with something that was like really strong and visceral to establish that like like hold on like uh this movie's gonna be like moving at speed it was gonna get crazy yeah <laughs> Well, you you guys did a really great job with that, right? You set a lot of tension for the film early on. Um, and it comes from those small but jarring moments, like the 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 gator scene. Mm -hmm. Um, were you intentionally tapping into those everyday fears that linger just beneath the surface? Um, um, I think it's it's always our goal for people to watch a film and feel that they see themselves in it see bits and pieces of themselves. Um, so those fears, yes, absolutely intentional. But I think more than that, you know, we were trying to tell, like a lot of filmmakers trying to tell a Trojan horse story, right? So we have like this thriller, this sci-fi that the, that the movie is, but at its heart, it's a really human story. And, you know, we hope when it's done, you kind of want to call your mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the film seems to, do that very well right while also tapping into folklore vibe um especially with the strange happenings around the lake well, what inspired the lore behind the location is it based on the actual folklore or did you create it specifically for the film the one thing that the it, so there's so much myth, myth in the lake it's yeah but we didn't tap into any of that myth but the one thing that we did tap into is the actual lake itself you get lost out there. Everyone does. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, we would take uh, kayak rides out ourselves and you just get turned around really quick. It's like really hard when you're in the trees to know north from south. And so that lent itself to this like, you know, a sort of classic genre idea of like the the girl who's gone missing. But it also the vastness of the lake, I think, spoke to the idea that there could be something happening out there that is, you know, unexplainable or, you know, potentially supernatural that could be taking place and because it's so out in the middle of nowhere like you know and unexplored so yeah people just like haven't come across it so much that so this could be a real place that actually exists there it's like the idea of the the monarch butterflies all going to that one mountain in mexico or those sheep that walk for 10 days in a circle in bangladesh these things that happen that you're like what does the earth what do what does nature know that we don't know yet and it's so much the answer is like you know so much but it's like, what could that be happening in Caddo, Caddo Lake? That I found very interesting. That, to me, was the hook, right? But then it gets even a little bit more sci-fi. I don't want to give away too much, but, you know, the portals, overlapping events. That Sometimes things, it, it feels like there's a layer of complexity uh, that's unique to this film. And I'm curious, how did you approach constructing a coherent narrative while keeping the audience engaged, even when things can get a little confusing with all the time yeah, stuff? For sure. Yeah, no, it was, I think it was making sure sort of an unlock when we were writing, it was making sure that the that both protagonists were engaged in similar experiences or at a similar sort of emotional level and stage of their journey at the same time. That if one of them had like moved ahead in the writing process, you could feel that disconnect. And so it was about building their stories um, as like one to one together. That that, that they were both uh, linked in that way. Um, and yeah, I feel like there was just a an expectation of getting to this sort of propulsive finish that was always the driving force 
And so when we had lost that sense of pace, that was like a real sign for us that something needed to change about the writing. It's really interesting. So I'm curious with the, with this movie, it's going to be, everyone's going to notice, right? This is a production from M night Shyamalan and as the film's producer, I'm curious how involved was he in shaping that narrative? Like, did he offer any specific advice on handling the film's mysterious elements? Um, we came to him with a fully realized script that had these twists and turns already baked in. Um, obviously the script changed with his uh influence but changing a piece of it echoes there's yeah. no pun intended a ripple effect right and so all of that kind of so we discovered a lot in production or we had limitations where it rained and we couldn't shoot this moment it did it. so we had to like reinvent pieces of it in post-production and that part he was so uh, incredibly involved in. Um, he watched the dailies every day in production. He called us um, with notes. He uh, came to set a few times, but post production, we literally lived on his property and edited in on his in his post production studios after we had a one full draft of the film. I I really love the way you handled a lot of the story in this film. There there's just so much detail that I, I had to go back and rewatch it. I was like, I, I have to see what little details were littered throughout the movie. Um, you know, with this film, there's a, also that huge emotional impact, um, how this family's history is forever altered and how they chose to handle themes of loss and reconciliation and such a really intricate uh, layered story. Can you let me know um, how... What, what was the thought process behind the final moments when there was just closure? Can you just kind of walk me through where that was inspired from and what you want audiences to walk away with? You know, there we knew there was going to be something sort of tragic and bittersweet about the ending um, because so much of it is about loss and, and grief that we didn't want to shy away from that and try to tie everything up in a bow and make it like this easy digestible story that you can kind of compartmentalize and put away. Uh, but the characters sort of informed that journey and we knew, uh, you know, at a certain point through the drafts where they were both going to end up. So it was about channeling backwards from that. And the, the hope is that you feel, um, like you, you know, sort of want to like give your mom and your dad, like that much more of a hug the next time you see them, you know, or that you, you know, like, keep these relationships that can be fragile, but are ultimately like really strong, these family ties, you know, your chosen family or otherwise, that you keep them close. They're, they're really, really important parts of the makeup who we are. Well, thank you both so much for your time. Thank you both so much for this wonderful movie. I, I didn't know I needed it. It was a welcome surprise. I'm very excited to recommend it to others. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So good. Thank you. Thanks. Nice meeting you too. I hope to talk to you again. Thank you. Uh, yeah.